Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 16 In the seventeenth year of Pekah the son of Remaliah, Ahaz the son of Jotham king of Judah began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria, and drave the Jews from Elath, and the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there unto this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people of it captive to Ker and slew Rezin. And King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest the fashion of the altar and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship thereof. And Urijah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah the priest made it against King Ahaz came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering, and poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And he brought also the brazen altar which was before the Lord from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, and the evening meat offering, and the king's burnt sacrifice, and his meat offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings. And sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the sacrifice. And the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Urijah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases, and removed the laver from off them, and took down the sea from off the brazen oxen that were under it, and put it upon a pavement of stones. And the covert for the Sabbath that they had built in the house, and the king's entry without, turned he from the house of the Lord for the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. Psalm 136 O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever. But over 
overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. And slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever, who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Good morning, friend of mine. A happy Sabbath day to you and your family. We can say with conviction that this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. May God's special blessing attend you and your family as you worship Him on this His holy Sabbath day. Today we are focusing on 2 Kings chapter 16 and Psalm 136. I'm reading now 2 Kings chapter 16 verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible states, In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord his God, as his father David had done, but he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. Today's message is entitled, Can People Do That? Can People Do That? The Face of evil. Can people do that? The face of evil. Let us pray, Father. We pray that your holy angels will hover over and around those who are listening at this time. May we hear you speaking to us through your word. For Christ's sake, amen. The BBC article published on April 20th, 2015, read, quote, Utah woman, Megan Huntsman, jailed for killing babies. End of quote. Utah woman, Megan Huntsman, jailed for killing babies. The news article continued. A woman in the United States of America, in the state of Utah, who admitted killing six of her own newborn babies, has received a sentence of up to life. In prison. Megan Huntsman, 40, was arrested a year ago after the bodies were found in cardboard boxes in the garage of her former house. In February, she pleaded guilty to six counts of murder. A judge in the city of Provo gave her the maximum sentence of at least 30 years and up to life in prison. Police said that the babies were born between 1996 and 2006 and were suffocated or strangled by huntsmen immediately after birth. They said she put the bodies in plastic bags and packed them in boxes in the garage of her home in Pleasant Grove, about 45 miles south of Salt Lake City. She left the boxes behind when she moved out of the house and they were found by her estranged husband, Darren West, last April. A seventh baby also found there was believed to be a stillborn. Police said that Huntsman had been a heavy methamphetamine user and did not want the babies. In court papers, she said she wanted to take 
responsibility for the debts. Oh, friend of mine, that is how cold and callous and unfeeling we can become without a relationship with Jesus. If she did not want to keep the children, she could have at least given them up for adoption, but she made the choice to kill them because she did not want them. Additionally, Jesus could have given her victory over her drug habit. Jesus could have given her victory over her drug habit. Friend of mine, the Bible speaks of another dispassionate and a similar evil committed by King Ahaz. We say that again. The Bible speaks of another dispassionate and a similar evil committed by King Ahaz. The Bible declares in our passage for today. In 2 Kings chapter 16, verses 1 and 3, the Bible says, In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out from before the children of Israel. Friend of mine, the phrase, Indeed, he made his son pass through the fire, describes Ahaz's participation in the worship of Molech, the pagan god or demon or the demon behind the god. Molech was worshipped by heating a metal statue representing the god until it was red hot, then placing a living infant on the outstretched hands of the statue while beating drums drowned out the screams of the child until the child was burned to death. In Leviticus chapter 20 verse 1 to 5, God pronounced the death sentence against all who worshipped Molech, saying, I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Molech to defile my sanctuary and profane my name. Leviticus 20 verse 3 And in Leviticus 18 verse 21, God says, And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of the Lord your God. I am the Lord. Sadly, Sadly, even a man as great as Solomon at least sanctioned the worship of Molech and built a temple to this idol, according to 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 7. One of the great crimes of the northern tribes of Israel was their worship, was their worship of Molech, which led to the Assyrian captivity in 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 17. As a matter of fact, King Manasseh of Judah gave his son to Molech, according to 2 Kings chapter 21, verse 6. And up to the days of King Josiah of Judah, Molech worship continued, because he, Josiah, destroyed a place of worship to that idol, in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 10. Now, according to one Bible commentator, some have supposed that the rite was a mere dedication or lustration, meaning the children passing between two fires and being thenceforward employed only in God's service. But the expressions, but the expressions used by the sacred writer and others, and still more, the descriptions that have come down to us from heathen and patristic authors make it absolutely certain that the phrase passing through the fire was no such innocent ceremony as this, but involved the deaths of children. The Bible in Second Chronicles chapter 28 verse 3 says, He has burnt his children in fire. Jeremiah chapter 19 verse 5 says, 
They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal. Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 21 states, Thou hast slain my children and deliver them to cause them to pass through the fire. Josephus the historian declares of Ahaz that he made his own son a whole burnt offering. One Diodorus Sicalus, a first century Greek historian, describes the ceremony as it took place at Carthage, the Phoenician colony. There was in the great temple there, he says, there was in the great temple there, he says, an image of Saturn, Molech, which was a human figure with a bull's head and outstretched arms. This image of metal was made glowing hot by a fire kindled within it, and the children laid in its arms rolled from thence into the fiery lap below. If the children cried, the parents stopped their noise by fondling and kissing them, for the victim ought not to weep, and the sound of complaint was drowned in the din of flutes and kettle drums. Mothers, said Plutarch, Plutarch was a Greek biographer and author born in the first century. Plutarch says, Mothers stood by without tears or sobs. If they wept or sobbed, they lost the honor of the act, and the children were sacrificed notwithstanding. The only doubtful point is whether the children were placed alive in the glowing burning arms of the image or whether they were first killed and afterwards burnt in sacrifice. But the description of Diodorus seems to imply the more cruel of the proceedings, where the children were placed alive in the arms of the burning idol. King Ahaz did according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. Concerning the practice of this terrible rite, by the Canaanitish nations at the time when Israel invaded Canaan and destroyed many of the Canaanite cities. We can read references like Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 21, Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 31, Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 9 and 10, Psalm 106 verse 37, and Psalm 106 verse 38. Oh, friend of mine, that is how uncaring and callous we can become when Jesus Christ is not in control of our hearts, offering children up to idols, your own children, our own children. That is how uncaring and callous we can become when Jesus is not in control of our hearts, when we are controlled by devilish doctrines and religious ideas. We end up beating our wives, abusing our children, robbing the poor, sending innocent people to jail, recommending surgeries for more money when we know that the condition can be cured outside of surgery. We end up giving students a failing grade for whatever reason, even though we know they have passed, not taking into account the money they have sacrificed to take the course. We end up having affair after affair without regard to how they are hurting our marriage partner. We end up following the same devil who tempted Ahaz to offer his children as human sacrifice. Oh, friend of mine, when once the restraints, hear the preacher, when once the restraints of God's word and his spirit are rejected, no one knows to what depths of degradation they may sink. So never say, I could never do that. I could never do that. No, if Jesus is not in our hearts, we can end up doing the worst and vilest of evil deeds. Because when once the restraints of God's word and his spirit are rejected, no one knows to what depths of degradation they may sink. Secret sin or master passion may hold them captive as helpless as was the demoniac of Capernaum and they can end up doing deeds similar to what Ahaz did.
in our text for today. But thank God, friend of mine, the cases of individuals who are trapped by Satan's snares, their cases are not hopeless. Oh, friend of mine, the means by which we can overcome the wicked one is that by which Jesus overcame the power of the word of the living God. We say that again, the means by which we may overcome the wicked one, Satan, is the same means by which Jesus overcame, which is by the power of the word of the living God. God does not control our minds without our consent, though, but if we desire to know and to do God's will, his promise is ours. His promises declare, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If any man willeth to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. According to John chapter 8 verse 32 and John chapter 7 verse 17. O oh, friend of mine, true faith in the promises of God. Everyone may be delivered from the snares of error and the control of sin. We say that again, through faith in the promises of God. Like the ones we just read, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. If any man willeth to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. Through faith in these promises, everyone may be delivered from the snares of error and the control of sin. Thank God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 declares, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. New creation. All the things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. O oh, friend of mine, whatever sin binds us today, Jesus can give us victory. Jesus can give us victory and deliver us even from the temptation to evil. The evil like that which King A has committed. May we allow Jesus into our hearts and into our lives every day so that we may have hearts that are loving and kind. Hearts with feelings like that of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that we may love our fellow human beings the way Jesus loves us. And the Bible tells us clearly, Thou shalt love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. May God help us to so allow him to control our lives that we may have loving feelings towards our fellow men. Let us pray, dear God, deliver us from the evil that we read in our text for today and all sin that can lead us to such evils. Teach us, dear God, to depend on you so that your Holy Spirit can transform our lives each day. We place all our prayer requests before you, dear God, and ask that you will look upon them and minister to the individuals who wrote them. And may we all desire not just answers to prayers, but may we desire to be transformed into the image of Christ. Grant us, dear Lord, a wonderful and spiritually refreshing time as we tarry in your presence today. Keep us, Lord, until we see you in peace when you come the second time, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.